Hello and welcome to this video in which we'll present uh, the process of doing discrete time convolution through a simple example. Uh, this is a simple example because each of the waveforms involved um, is zero for most of its length and the waveforms are fairly uh, simple, they're arbitrary, and so we won't end up having to solve um, uh, long or difficult summations to do this. So the goal here is to help you understand the concepts, help you understand the process, and then in subsequent videos we'll do much more complicated examples. Okay, so at the top here I've written down the convolution equation. The idea that for a particular value of n, y at that value of n, where y is x convolved with h. Um, this notation, by the way, is awful. It makes real mathematicians cringe because it doesn't really describe what we're doing. This summation does. And so again, the idea is that for a particular value of n, we get y by taking all of x from minus infinity up to plus infinity and multiplying it by h, where h has been shifted by n and uh, actually flipped about the zero axis, then shifted by n. So the idea is that to compute y of n, we need to, in principle, have all of x and all of h. Okay. So this notation where we've got x of n and h of n, this is actually somewhat um, misleading because, in fact, to compute y of n, we'll need x uh, for its index going from minus infinity to infinity and h for its index going from minus infinity to infinity in the most general case. And so in the summation then, we've replaced the n's by k's. We can do that because um, if I want to graph x of k rather than x of n, all I do is I take x of n and replace n by k. Uh, this is basically an arbitrary variable and I can call it what I want and still have the same function. Okay, and the same goes for h. And again, the way we'll do this is we'll pick a value for n. That value for n will stay, or we'll, we'll keep it constant here. We'll then evaluate the summation, and that will give us then the value of y of n. So for example, we'll start off um, getting y of negative 4 and y of negative 3 and so on. And we'll basically just keep picking different values of n and those different values of n will, um, for each of those different values of n, will compute a corresponding y value from the entirety of the x function and the entirety of the h function. So that's why k has replaced n in all of these graphs. Okay, so the, signal that, uh, the signals that we'll use, x of k looks like this. This is basically an arbitrary uh, function. I just made it up. Um, but it illustrates things quite nicely, and uh, hopefully it will help you understand how this works. h looks like this. Again, it's an arbitrary function that I made up. So in order to do the convolution, we need to first look at what happens. How, what does h of n minus k mean? Well, we can change the sign on h. I'm sorry, we can change the sign of k here, and this has the effect of flipping h about the uh, sample where k is equal to 0. So if we go back, here you can see what it looked like before I flipped it. Now you can see what it looks like when I flip it. And then if I have, say, h of minus 4 minus k, it takes this signal that I've flipped about the uh, point k is equal to 0, and if I've got minus 4 minus k, it will shift this flipped signal 4 to the left. So this guy here goes down to minus 4. This guy here goes to minus 5. Uh, this guy here goes to minus 3. And this will go to minus 2. Okay. So um, this again will be our value of n, and we'll start off with different values of n. We'll, well, for different values of n, we'll actually compute 
what the sum is. So let's actually look at the case where n is equal to minus 4. Uh, let's see, we'll make this really big. So we have n is equal to minus 4. We have x of k, which is basically the, the x that we just um, started with. We have h of minus 4 minus k. And again, this minus 4 is n. Um, and so we're looking at the case where n is equal to minus 4. And as we showed in the last uh, uh, screen, uh, we've taken h and shifted it to the left by 4. Okay. Now, to compute the summation, again, the thing that we're trying to compute is the summation k going from minus infinity to infinity x of k h of minus 4 minus k in this case because n again is minus 4. I'll probably say that 20 or 30 more times. So what I need to do is I need to take x and I need to multiply it by this h shifted and or flipped and shifted. Okay so at minus 5, where k is minus 5, I have x of k is 0, so it doesn't matter what h of k is. The product of x at minus 5 and h of minus 4 minus 5 is going to be 0. And so what I've done is here, for k is equal to minus 5, I've drawn the product of this times this. And similarly, for k is equal to minus 4, I've drawn the product of this times this. This times this, this times this. So you can see here that everywhere h of minus 4 minus k is not 0, x of k is 0. And similarly, so now I have out here x of k times this guy, the, these guys out here, for every uh, k where x of k is not 0, h of k is 0. So the product here is entirely zeros. And so the summation, the summation for n is equal to minus 4 is going to be 0. Okay, so we now know that y of minus 4 is equal to 0. Isn't that exciting? We've got our first value here. Okay, well, let's look at what happens when n is equal to negative 3. Okay, uh, x of k stays the same. h of negative 3 minus k is h flipped about the point... Uh, k is equal to 0, then shifted 3 to the left, which is what I have here. Okay, and if you don't believe me, you can go back in the tape, look at h of minus k, and see that we have indeed just shifted it 3 to the left. Now I'm going to compute the product again. And for k equal to minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, and minus 2, x of k is 0, even though h of negative 3 minus k is not 0, so the product is 0. But here, when k is equal to negative 1, I have x equal to negative 1 here, and h of minus 3 minus 1 equal to 1 here. So the product of negative 1 and 1 is negative 1. And then for k uh, larger than 0, I've got zeros here for h of minus 3 minus k. And so no matter what I have up here, these guys cause the product to be 0, which is what I would have here. Now, to get y, again, I will sum all of these values, because I'm summing from k going from minus infinity to infinity. All the values are 0, except here at negative 1, where I have a product of negative 1, and all these values are 0. So y of minus 3, oh dear, what on earth is going on here? Yeah, that was ugly. y of minus 3 is equal to just this term, which is negative 1. OK, isn't this fun? Hopefully, you're beginning to see the process by which this works. OK, so let's look at the case where n is negative 2. Well, this is strange. My writing program every so often just decides to write something badly. OK, so here I have x of k, h of negative k, shifted 2 to the left. And now I find the product of each of these terms, where h of k, or 2 minus k, is not 0. Down here, I have 0 times 1, 0 times minus 1. So the first thing that's not 0 in my product is negative 1 times 2. 
that's this guy. Then I have a 1 times 1, that's this guy. Then I have zeros times everything up here, which gives me these guys. Okay. So this says then that y of negative 2 is going to be the sum of these two guys, which is negative 2 plus 1, or negative 1. Okay. Well, I can tell we're having fun now. This represents the case where n is equal to negative 1. And again, x of k, h flipped about 0 and shifted to the left by 1 is this guy. And now you can see the places where uh, x, the values of k where x and h of minus 1 minus k are non-zero are for k is equal to negative 1. I have negative 1 times negative 1, which gives me a positive 1 here. I have 1 times 2, which gives me a positive 2 here. I have 0 times 1, and then 0 times anything up here. So for this case, y of negative 1, this is going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. OK, let's go on for n is equal to 0. So I have x of k, h of minus k. It's not shifted at all. Uh, so the products, I'll have uh, minus 1 times 1, which gives me minus 1. I'll have 1 times minus 1, which gives me minus 1. I'll have 0 times 2, which gives me 0. 2 times 1, which gives me 2. And everything down here or up here has, uh, I'm multiplying 0 by 0. So in this case, y of 0, this is really strange, it's not writing well, is equal to, um, let's see, negative 1 neg minus 1 plus 2, which is 0. OK. Well, as much fun as it would be to just zip through this, I'm out of time. So we'll have to finish this in part two. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.